Next Wave DV presents NAB 2013. Made possible by Kessler Crane, innovative tools for filmmakers. Red Rock Micro, introducing the one man crew. Zeiss, we make it visible. We're at the Kessler booth checking out some new products for everybody looking for motion control for their cameras. Uh, Eric, you guys have not stopped. I think every year you come out with a whole new lineup. I don't know how we're going to have enough time on our on YouTube to cover everything you got. Uh, so show us this. This looks amazing. I've seen everybody and their brother have a small jib, but you guys reinvented it and made it incredibly flexible. Yeah, yeah. So five pounds fits in suitcase, backpack, wherever you want to go. Uh, deploys out to here behind us. You know, six and a half foot crane. Um, 10 pound cameras, takes less than a minute, no loose parts uh, to uh, you know lose anything on your travel. So it's gonna be you know a, a great companion for someone that's gotta do some backpacking or a lot of travel. So now 10 pound capacity, that's different than a lot of the small smaller chips, these travel chips are. Um, so a camera like the FS700 or something like that, would that be able to be handled by this? Sure, yeah, I mean obviously because of the longer, I mean it was originally designed for DSLR guys, uh, but it can't handle anything, you know, the weight capacity is 10 pounds. Uh, if you're using a longer camera, you may need to uh, use like one of our longer quick release plates just to get the adjustment right at the end. But yeah, you can accommodate. So now this is again, you're showing this is completely self-contained. Everything is available. You don't have to start adding extra parts in there aside from a weight, obviously. Right. So can you take us through how that uh, assembles? Yeah, sure. So uh, the camera platform just flips over. There's a little lock ring here. You just pull that out and that snaps into place. The tail stock then just folds out. Slides in and acts as the coupler. Lock that. It's got adjustable uh, drag control on both the uh, the pan and the tilt of it. Those in, those in, slide it out. You can see here it has lock pockets in between, so nothing's going to ever slip on you. The other neat thing is here we have a telescopic uh, weight bar system, which almost uh, equates to a one-to-one -one ratio, so the amount of counterbalance weight you re that this requires about half of a lot of the other ultra jibs on the market. So, um, really fast, I don't even think that was a minute, but uh, you know, it's gonna deploy out, lightweight, five pounds. Yeah, can you tell us about this kind of skeletal design? Yeah, so that was, you know, key to getting it down to the five pounds. Uh, our engineers designed this in SolidWorks, which they have a lot of stress load analysis, which allows them to put the, the uh, the weight on this in a virtual environment, and they can just start cutting away material until they can see that you know it's getting too much, and add it back in the places where it's needed, and take out where it's not. And now, one thing too that intrigued me is you actually have the swivel head built into this. Yeah, so it does actually have a, a, a fluid swivel base right here that has adjustable drag, very similar, basically identical to what's on a normal fluid head. We have the quick release plate system on here. If you're using ours, everything just snaps together. I highly recommend doing that. But if you don't want to, this can come off, and you can add a ball uh, mount or another quick release plate to a Manfrotto head or whatever you're using. Because okay. that's one thing that I've seen with other uh, of the, uh, the small jibs is that you had to have a fluid head, which then added to the, the size of, of weight the, and right. cost and everything. Correct. Yeah. So this is this is an all-in-one device. So tell us about the pricing on this. So it's five ninety-nine. Uh, we had. Uh, open sales on this last week. We sold out in like nine minutes. Uh, we have several hundred more which shouldn't be landing on our doorsteps with the components uh, within uh, the next two to three weeks, I believe. And then the quick release system, that, that's still separate. That doesn't yeah, that's a it. separate device. Right. Right. Yep. And uh, can you tell us quickly about that? I know that came out. Uh, I have one and I love it. Uh, what, uh, what can that do? For, for camera mounts and for some of the mounts for your other year rigging? Right, well a lot of quick releases on the market are designed just for cameras. So they have 5, 15, maybe 20, 30 pound weight capacities, but not you know what we can handle, cranes and sliders and the, and the twisting the torsional loads that those devices put on there. So we went to work with this. It's a very fast drop-in system. Let your, you just drop your plate in. It has this drop gate design which allows it to go in audible click so you know you're in. Once you're in, uh, it has safety stops, so you know you're solid. You can't, you can adjust it, but it's not going to come out. Once you get adjusted, probably you just have this very strong cam lock, snaps it in, you're done. And, and, and the and the ball mount here, so like if you if you're mounting this to like a fluid head, yeah, for built your in goal, uh, our uh, uh, bullseye level. Mm -hmm. So right, yeah, you always know that you're going to be level right at the camera, which awesome. is where it matters. 
Uh, for your motion control systems, you have kind of two options primarily. You have the basic controller and then you have the traditional Oracle controller, which can be used for hand tilts. But what about people that want to have fully programmable slider moves but don't need a two-axis control of the standard Oracle? Right, so here's our Oracle Lite, which is basically one half of an Oracle. So just how you described, we had a lot of people that wanted to just do time lapsing or stop motion work with a slider, one axis. But they, only, but they wanted the features on our two-axis system, the Oracle. So we came up with this, which is much smaller, lighter weight, has the joysticks, basically the same controls. We did build the intervalometer into it, so you don't have to buy the separate uh, control module. It's a little cleaner package. We also have some other input ports here for some other devices we plan on adding in the future, so we've got some tricks up our sleeves there. Um, and the, the most amazing thing about it is the price point. It's $399. Wow. So very yeah. affordable. Anybody wants to get out and do some basic motion control. It is an analog system. It isn't like Senate Drive. Uh, so there are still some limitations, but still a very powerful tool. So does this is have smart laps? And, and it, yeah, it does have smart laps, advanced, all the same features as the Oracle. Mm -hmm. Pretty much anything you can do with that, you can do with this. Awesome. And I see an axis control. Can you tell us how yeah, that works? Yeah, so wh what you can do with this is run, uh, right now, you know, it's set up here on a slider, but if you have a revolution head, you can run one of the axes. So this is just the act between pan and tilt. Uh, selector on the on that, and also what you can do with this is if you're wanting to run a three-axis time lapse, you can record your smart lapse move on a slider, your pan, tilt all separately, and they have a bridge cable that will bridge all three together and fire them off really? all at the same time. That's that's interesting to me because I have the standard ultra control. I've got the uh, um, the uh, slider and the revolution head. But the times where you kind of pick and choose, all right, do I want to do a slide, do I want to do a pan or a tilt or whatever, and I don't necessarily need two Oracle's full controllers, having the ability to be able to have the two work together. It's going to make things easier. easier. Yeah. Right. Yep. Great. All right, Eric, you guys build heavy-duty machinery. But are you building this one out of wood now, or what, what do you, what do you got going It looks on? like wood, yeah. doesn't it? Uh, actually, this is a new process. It's a hydro printing process. Uh, we have a lot of customers that you know want some style, so uh, we we came up with this. We're gonna have a couple other finishes available as well. That you know, for the guys that want you know something a little more custom, you know, a little more personalized, uh, you know, we're gonna offer some nice, nice looking devices like this, and probably all of our sliders. Uh, not just the Cine slider. Um, also, too, we have a lot of customers out that are shooting like um, outdoor shows, uh, hunting programs, things like that. So we have the, uh, you know, the the next camo here, and then we also have a lot of the, our military people that are, you know, out shooting for the military. And uh, this is the similar to the standard U.S. military digi camo. So for those guys out there, we wanted to do something that you know allowed them to, uh, I guess, reflect what they do. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. So people are always wanting to go lighter weight, and since you didn't make that other one out of balsa wood, tell me how you can make an even stronger and lighter weight system that you already have. Right, carbon fiber obviously is the uh, the final frontier, I guess, for us as far as strength and uh, and light weight. So we we had a lot of people asking, you know. I need this stuff to be as light as possible. I have the back and back, I have to travel, every pound counts. So there's no real difference in performance between this and our standard slider, uh, but it is two pounds lighter. So if that, you know, if you're that guy where every pound counts, this is gonna be your tool. Great to have the option. Yeah, right. So batteries are a great tool to have when you can't be anywhere by, by power or if you're going for a long period of time. You guys have some new battery technology that you just came out with, correct? Right, yeah, this is the new lithium iron phosphate batteries. Completely green, lightweight, this whole thing weighs, I think, just under four pounds. So very lightweight, 2,500 charge cycles, so that even if you charged it every day, you're gonna get, what is that, five years roughly out of it. Um, cigarette lighter port output, uh, XLR, we have, it comes with this standard little uh, adapter here so you can you know, charge your iPad if you're running our motion control system out in the field. Uh, this will run an eight axis rig, like time lapsing for like 22 hours, it's 10 amp hour output. Uh, can also output up to 14 amps continuously so that way if you're running high uh, uh, consumption lights, you know, it'll run that. Uh, built in battery meter so you're always gonna know how well you're powered. For our guys out in all weather, we have this uh, jacket system that just, folds out so if you're out in the rain or snow this is going to keep you know the weather off of it as well as a built-in uh, pouch in the backside so you put your Oracle your basic controller your center drive brain in this button everything up and leave it out to run all night so what's the price point on this this is uh, $599 so it's a little pricey but when you compare it to lead acid batteries that typically only have a two to four hundred charge cycle this is going to last you know, four to five times as long, so therefore it's going to come in much cheaper over the long haul. Plus, it's you know it's a much safer, it's uh, eco-friendly.
And the capacity is much higher. Yes, very good, especially for the weight. Yeah, a uh, lead-acid battery up a 10 amp would typically weighs about 12 pounds. This is only four, so about a third of the weight. Great. All right, so you guys did a great job teasing us about your NAB uh, gear. And I remember watching your video and saying, counting the axis of motion and going, that's that's more than what you currently have. And so now I came here, I see this device. This is this is mind-blowing, so tell me about what I'm looking at right now. Right, okay, so this is Cine Drive, and a Cine Drive can start off as simple as a one-axis slider or just a or turntable like you have here, but we wanted to kind of show off what the system's capable of, and this is actually only about 10% of what it's capable of. But this is an eight-axis rig here. Uh, you know, we're pulling zoom, focus, we're raising, swinging, panning, tilting, doing all this on this, and as well as the uh, turntable system. So uh, with this system, obviously fully digitally encoded, that means exact precision, exact repeatability, whether you're doing visual effects shot, uh, time lapse, stop motion, it's pretty much capable of doing anything. You can run it from Windows, Mac, or our iPad app. So now, the, the CineDrive system, we look at the screen, it, for people that may have never done anything like this, it can be a little scary. Tell us why this is important and how easy it is to use. It's super easy, super intuitive. I mean, we have a couple stations out here where people are actually using it themselves. Within two minutes, they completely get it. All you do is click on the axis that you want to move, move it into a position, move all of the axis related to that, record keyframe, just move down. You can reposition them. You can edit the curve. It's, it's just very intuitive. Um, we have the software, you can download it right now and play with it off of our Kessler, uh, Kessler Cine Drive website, so I encourage anybody that's even interested in that to go ahead and download the software and use it. Um, and you'll see how simple it is. And all you, then when you're ready to play it back, you just simply hit play and, and adjust the time for the, the duration of the move. So camera motion obviously is a new thing. You guys have been doing it for a long time. Can you remind us again what makes Cine Drive unique and why it's it's really taken it by storm? It's the exact, well, the, the, the fast setup, to, you know, it's very quick to set up an extremely complex move. Like Preston comes in here every morning, sets up some new move here. It takes him like 20 minutes to set this up. It's nothing, you know, uh, and it's exactly repeatable. Um, you know, right now this could be uh, replacing a cameraman in your studio, or if you don't have a cameraman, you can have while doing interviews, you can have this camera flying around, just running all day. Um, you know, it also can be programmed to where you can, you know, go outside when it's sunny and set up a move for time lapse at night and have it start at midnight for you. Uh, remotely, so it's just going to make everything easier on the camera. And now you're using a, a DSLR, uh, Canon DSLR. What kind of weight capacity can this have? Uh, in the current configuration, 25 pounds. We also offer a different motor inside uh, our brick system here that can allow up to 50 pound cameras. So, how many axes of motion are being handled right now? Right now it's eight. eight. Yeah, we have seven here on this rig, and then with the turntable, it makes it eight. Is there a limitation to the number? 254. After 20, we have to inject power, we have T-power in on the line just because we're only allowed to put so much amperage out at each so. But essentially, you know, you can go up to 254 axis. And would you see yourself building in the future something in a larger scale to this? Yeah, we actually have something in progress right now that we uh, hope to show possibly at Cine, uh, Cine here. Very good. Um, so this system, what we're looking at, can you give us a rough price point for where it would stand? Right, so okay, you know, you can buy a Cine Drive one piece at a time or as a full package like this. Something like this is going to probably run the neighborhood of 12000 but you can start off with a brain and a, and a slider for 2000 and then traditionally most people are just going to go with a three-axis system at 6500 for three axis. It's pan, tilt, slide. And for the, the level of control, though, that is like very, very inexpensive. Compared. Oh, yeah, uh, yes, yeah. The motion control on this level of quality and precision and zero backlash and, you know, everything that goes into this, nothing on the market touches it. Because in the past, you know, the motion control has been done by Hollywood, right. and to the precision and stuff. But it, it's always to a level of a multi-million dollar production. Yes. It isn't something that a, a smaller production company could do themselves. Right now, it's accessible to any anyone now. I mean, you know, whether you can, you know, afford to spend the six thousand to start with a system like this, or you rent it. But even the rent on this is going to be obviously very affordable for most people. And even if you go the the, the, the purchasing route, it's something that you can purchase, master, and then be able to start charging course, your clients yeah. for. Of course, definitely, yeah. This will make you more money. I mean, you, when you sell shots like this, you know, people will pay for that. And, and the idea of being able to uh, ma marry moves like this with like visual effects and stuff like that where you need that precision you need to be able to composite two shots together wherever it may be right. uh, there's no really other way to do it you can't do it by hand right not very easily anyhow yeah right. so this is this will make it easy and and fast 
uh, to pull off of those shots. And plus with a system like this, I mean really, it, it cannot be built any better. The, the, our resolution on our coders are ridiculously more than what you would ever need. Uh, the build quality is second to none. I mean, it's you know solid stainless steel, aluminum, uh, the zero backlash, high precision gearing. So this will be the last system anyone would ever have to buy. Software updates will be coming for years. We have a million bells and whistles we want to throw on this thing. So you know those will always be available as updates uh, for the system. But as far as the physical system goes, you'll never have to buy anything. Else. Now I've got a question from from a high speed standpoint. Uh, what is the maximum speed that this could operate if you want to do some slow motion? Right, so we have uh, different motors, you know, that's one nice thing about our system is the motors are swappable. So, you know, we have the right tool for the right choice. Whether you're doing heavy lifting and need a lot of power, you can put a heavy duty, super powerful motor on there. If you need high speed, we have those as well. The fastest motor that we have will run about three feet a second. Very good. And, and that'll work from multiple axes as well? or? Well, yeah, only on the like the external motor stuff, uh, you can change out the motors. The bricks are married, you know, that semi-married. You can send in to us and we can change those out, or we sell different bricks that have uh, different gear ratios in them. So, like, for the, the, the uh, Revolution head that I have, it, it's fast. Um, I can't do, like, super, super fast moves. Is the Cinedrive in the same ballpark as the Revolution? Yeah, the one that we're selling right now, uh, the, the, the standard unit, is a very comparable as far as the weight capacity and the speed ratios of the current Revolution 2 head. Uh, but we can custom build anything. We can change that gearing out very, very quickly. Great. So we and have a modular internal motor system. Great. So that's something that you can work with a client if they're interested in of that. Of course. That yeah, level. we can make a super high-speed head or we can make one that, you know, pull tree stumps out of the ground if you want to. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Well, thanks, Eric. Hey, really appreciate it. Thank you. Subscribe to Next Wave TV, where filmmakers get educated.